All right, I am dedicating or devoting this month's masterclass to talking about prescription online dermatology services. And they're mainly for tretinoin, which is retinoic acid. I get a lot of questions about what I think about these services. Um, and just a disclaimer here, back in 2017, I think it was, um, I was hired by Dramatica before Dramatica launched to help set up that service. Um, so six months prior to it launching, um, I was involved in that and also for about a year or so after. So um, I am not affiliated with Dramatica now. I have no um, kind of financial relationship with them. Um, I was paid as a consultant, as in someone who consults on their business. Um, but that was basically it. So I have no stake in that business. So when I talk about that business, um, it's not specifically because I'm benefiting from that. Because um, then generally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that anyway. So now, I think that um, these online services have a place in the spectrum of giving patients access to the appropriate medical treatment or the appropriate effective skincare for their condition. So I think they definitely have a place in the market and are very helpful for certain types of people. So um, I know a lot about how these run and how they're set up because I did work for Dramatica for um, quite a while when they were first setting up. So I do understand them from a sales and marketing and patient perspective as well as a medical perspective. So now I'm going to talk about Pros and cons. So let's talk about the positives first. Now, I had to make a list so I wouldn't forget anything. So one positive is it allows people with very relatively mild skin conditions like mild acne, mild pigmentation, or those who just want to use evidence-based anti-aging treatment like tretinoin to access that product in an inexpensive, fairly convenient way um, where you're not being kind of scammed by a department store or cosmetic counter and being sold hundreds of products uh, that are basically useless. So all of the ones that are out there, um, Dermatica, Skin and Me, Curology, they all um, produce some form of tretinoin. And we know that tretinoin is the gold standard for anti-aging and it's licensed um, for the treatment of fine lines. So it used to be very hard to get tretinoin in the UK. Um, the price was kind of prohibitive. Uh, prohibitive. It's still sold at an extortionate price via prescription. So a 15 gram tube can cost you hundred pounds, which is just a lot more than it should be. Um, but these online services make it very easy to get a hold of a good quality uh, tretinoin at a low price point. So usually it's about 20 pounds per month. So that's that's a pro. So it's a huge pro because it does allow dermatology to be more accessible to people. And I think that is really important considering that there's not enough dermatologists in the world and often to see a dermatologist is out of people's price point. So um, that's great. Now, cons. So there, there are some cons to this. Um, sometimes the combinations that are made um, are funny combinations that don't really have an evidence base. So a lot of you know already which ones I'm going to talk about. Um, anywhere where the tretinoin is less than 0.01%. So if you're looking at tretinoin at 0.006%, that doesn't have any evidence base for efficacy. Really, the evidence base is for over 0 0.02, but some people start on slightly lower than that in order to just be able to tolerate it better initially. Um, azelaic acid 4%, for example, combining tretinoin with azelaic acid. I don't really, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't think it's very helpful. I don't like azelaic acid. Generally, I don't think it does anything. Um, niacinamide, I think, is a pointless um, kind of chemical as well, uh, or skincare agent. Um, I don't like giving people stuff they don't need. So I think most people don't need that, or no one needs niacinamide. Um, no one needs azelaic acid. So that's one reason why I'm not a fan um, because the combinations are often for marketing reasons rather than clinical reasons. So for example, niacinamide being thrown in there, it's not very clinical. That's because people want niacinamide because it's supposedly marketed as this like magic thing for all skin problems. I also don't think some of the combinations work chemically. So for example, tretinoin and azelaic acid. So I'm a little bit skeptical about that. Again, is that being done for marketing reasons because people want azelaic acid because it's being sold as the panacea for everything or is there a clinical indication? Um, the other thing is that the um, these services generally are very restrictive in the way that they can compound things because they're batch processed. Um, obviously it has to be um, kind of uh, revenue uh, efficient. So you're not going to make an individual cream for every single patient. That wouldn't really be um, cost effective for a business. So, and there's also this risk of litigation when you're dealing with kind of an online service. 
So for example, um, they don't put a mild steroid into triple combination therapy. Uh, they only allow patients to use hydroquinone for three months at a time, for example, which is also not really evidence-based. Um, and often they'll switch patients for pigmentation from hydroquinone to azelic acid. And again, azelic acid does not treat pigmentation. So these things are a little bit restrictive. Uh, they're frustrating for patients. Um, and that little, that flexibility problem is a, is a big issue. So if anyone has kind of more severe melasma or more severe acne, they will probably not find that much benefit from these types of restrictive concentrations of, of ingredients. Um, other thing is that it can be a little bit misleading because regulation around this type of service means that it can be done by a prescribing pharmacist and not by a doctor. So you think you may be getting specific treatment for your problem from a doctor when you're actually getting it from a pharmacist. Now, whether or not that's bad or good, it depends on who the pharmacist is and what you're getting and what you're being treated for. Um, so, you know, there, there's these kind of regulatory issues as well. Um, and it doesn't work for everyone. So and that can be disappointing. Um, medicine is not a one size fits all type of service. Uh, it is very much an individual thing. It has to be done on an individual basis and it can't be kind of batch processed. These online services basically see patients in batches and put people into categories. And though that works, that can work for some people, for the majority of people, uh, treatment, medical treatment has to be a little more bespoke or personalized. Um, so for that reason, it's not great either. So the bottom line is these services can be very helpful. They can be very cost effective. They're great for maintenance treatment for some of my patients. Um, and I do think they have their role to play in, in providing a dermatology service to the greater public. Um, there are some caveats to that, which I've mentioned. Um, so it's definitely worth trying out if you want to try tretinoin, try hydroquinone, or try a specific type of ant acne treatment. Um, but I wouldn't uh, hang all your hopes on it, um, but it's definitely something worth looking into if you want to go down the prescription skincare route, which is what I would generally say is, is a good thing to do, um, but again, with, with caveats.